Beyond Light is Destiny 2's next DLC expansion, and alongside its release, Bungie is implementing a system known as the Destiny Content Vault, to which they'll be vaulting lesser used content in the game, alongside old seasonal content to make room for future big releases. One of those pieces of content that's getting vaulted is the questline for the Izanagi's Burden, which we're going to be covering in today's video. Izanagi's Burden is one of the best sniper rifles in the game, as it possesses the unique ability to load all of its rounds into one major shot for extreme burst damage on its targets. With this questline going away on November 10th, I decided to make a video to show you guys how to get this absolute beast of a weapon before its quest is gone. Do keep in mind that you will need Forsaken to get this questline complete, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. If you want to get your hands on the Izanagi's Burden, head on over to the tower and speak with Ada-1 and grab the mysterious box to start the quest. You'll notice that this box is going to need four different keys to unlock. So to unlock this box, you're going to need the four keys that are obtained from one of each of the four forges in the game. If you're unfamiliar with how forges work in Destiny 2, make sure to click the card on your screen right now as I have an entire beginner's guide to getting you started in the Black Armory. Now, to get a key to drop from a forge, you must reach the second ball throwing phase for the activity. After throwing the first 20 balls into the forge, you may notice these floating robots with a blue aura around them that will spawn in the vicinity, and you must kill both of these robots, as there will be two, before they end up disappearing. They will only be shown for a short time during the forge. You'll be given the maximum temper buff after you kill both of them to show that you did it correctly. At the end of the forge, a bonus chest is going to spawn with the key inside of it because of this buff. Now, the Izanami forge is going to give the butterfly key, the Volunder forge is going to give the fish hook key, and the Gofanon forge is going to give the hand key. Berguja gives the black armory key, however, when doing your first time, it's only going to drop the key mold, which is going to require some extra steps. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the locations of all of these robots across all of the forges, and then we're going to jump into the steps on the black armory key mold. Now, with all of those locations being shown, do keep in mind that these forges are on a daily rotation, meaning that one day it could be Izanami, then the next day it's Volunder, then the next day it's Gofanon. So you aren't going to be able to do all of this in one day, it is going to take a minimum of four. So do keep that in mind and you can check every single day at 1pm Eastern on the Earth part of your map at the bottom left to see what the forge is for that day. Now after you've done Berguja, of course you aren't going to get the key, you are going to get the key mold. So let's go and go over these steps that it's going to ask you to do. The first step it's going to ask you to do is actually go to the Leviathan Raid and get 24 of the Watcher lenses. So go to Nessus, click on the Leviathan, and load into the raid. To do this, follow the path that I take to this room. You'll notice that there are 6 switches that go from left to right, and they are labeled as such, 1 through 6. Flip the switches in this order, 1, 5, 3, 2, 4, 6. Make sure to do it fast enough, and this will unlock the underbelly to the Leviathan, where you can go and farm the lenses. So just follow the path that I take to get there. Once
Once reaching this room, you'll be met with the Watchers. Kill as many as you can before their shields activate from detecting you. Enemies are gonna flood the room shortly after you make yourself known, but after taking care of them, you can then finish off the rest of the Watchers and get their lenses. Leave the room from where you came in and you'll notice that the door is locked behind you. When opening it back up, you'll notice the enemies reset themselves and you can farm out the lenses to your heart's content. After getting all 24, you'll be asked to get Glimmer Amethyst from either caches, public events, or strikes. Picking up cash chests around patrols and running public events is the fastest way to progress this part, but I personally just ran strikes since I already enjoy them anyways. Just make sure that you're picking up the caches while you're in between running public events and you'll be able to get it done pretty quick. After this, go back to the Berguja Forge, kill the floating robots, and open the chest at the end to finally be met with the Black Armory Key. So basically just do the same thing that you did to get the key mold. Now, with that being done, we have all four keys. The Butterfly Key, Fish Hook Key, Hand Key, and the newly crafted Black Armory Key. Make sure to use all of those in your Quest Tab inventory to unlock the mysterious box, to which you will then be asked to go back to 801, and you'll be met with the unidentified frame that requires the completion of a rare bounty. These bounties are just gotten by completing Black Armory bounties from Ada, so just make sure that you grab all your daily and your weeklies and complete them to ensure that you get one. My rare bounty only required the completion of other bounties, so yeah, I know, bountyception. They're never really all that complicated, although there is a specific one that may ask you to complete it with a full set of Black Armory gear, in which case, you better get grinded. After completing your rare bounty, you're going to be asked to complete the Shattered Throne dungeon to recover some Ascendant Glass. So feel free to LFG with people in my Discord server or just run with some friends, but the Shattered Throne is a dungeon within the Dreaming City and it's going to require at least two other people if you don't want to solo it. Once this is done, you'll be asked to complete the Pyramidian Strike on Io to gather Radiant Phase Glass. This is a pretty straightforward step that is then followed up by running the Lock and Key quest on the EDZ. Finally, after completing this quest, you then return to Ada 1 and receive your Izanagi's Burden Sniper Rifle. Now, to get the catalyst for this weapon, which is a direct upgrade to its damage, so you want to do so as soon as possible, all you have to do is complete a heroic menagerie run with your Chalice of Opulence fully upgraded. So make sure to grab a few friends, make sure you have your Chalice fully upgraded by using any of the Imperials that you get, and you can get this done pretty easily just by doing one singular run. Of course, upgrading your Chalice may take some time if you haven't already, but you can always go to Watcher's Grave on Nessus, go to the barge, and open up the chest on that ship to ensure that you get some bonus Imperials every single week. Now, to level up your Catalyst once you get it, just go to the Last Wish Raid, type in this code to the Wish Wall that you see on screen, and this is going to take you to the Shuro Chi checkpoint encounter. Make sure that you're on your hunter and use the top tree Night Stalker so that you can tether multiple enemies right out the gate and one shot them with the Izanagi, which will kill multiple at the same time, and you'll be able to level your catalyst to full in no time. That is pretty much all the information that I have for you guys on the Izanagi's Burden. We went over how to start the quest line, how to get done with the quest line, as well as how to get your hands on the catalyst and properly level it up. I hope that this guide was useful for all of you guys out there, as it's one that I've been meaning to make for quite a while now, as this sniper rifle is absolutely insane. I have a lot more videos coming up on the channel very soon, and a lot of those videos are going to be focused around DCV content so that you can get it all before Beyond Light comes out. But guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Make sure to leave a like on the video if you did like it, dislike if you did not. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you all next time.